Yeah, now we do know that you're a big fan of Laurel and Hardy. So My favourites no. of all time. Yeah, you're going to yeah. love this. Uh, Giles traces the last UK tour to Birmingham and reveals how a local carpenter came to have a hand in the ultimate custard pie fight. <laughs> In the winter of 1953, comedy legends Laurel and Hardy began what was to be their last ever tour in Britain. Straight from Cuckoo Land came Stan Laurel, and tagging along behind, 21 stones worth of Oliver Hardy. Throughout their long career, the British public had always had a special bond with the pair. The tour brought them here, to Birmingham, to this very street, but little did they know then that Britain's second city would come to play a pivotal role in preserving their legacy. Roy Edwards was one of those lucky enough to see them in the flesh. Roy, you saw them six years before their final tour, didn't you? Well, I was 14. At the time, when it came to the theatre, I came in from 6.30 till 8.30. What did it feel like to actually be there in the front row of the Upper Gods, having paid your nine pence, watching these people? Well, it was amazing, really, because we'd only seen them in black and white. Now they were in living colour on the stage in Birmingham. What was the audience reaction? The audience were elated just to see them. I think it was the first actual Hollywood film stars that we'd ever seen live. And when the curtain came down, what did you do? We got outside as quick as we could to get to the stage door. Mm -hmm. In the snow? In the snow. And we waited for them to come out. Stan uh, came quite close to me before he got in the car, and I managed to shake Stan, Stan's hand. Yeah. This is as close as we're going to get, viewers. This is the hand that shook the hand of Stan, Stan Laurel. Laurel. And this is the guy who saw Laurel and Hardy in colour. On that final tour, they stayed here in the beautiful Brummage Inn Palace, the Barton's Arms. Another regular was an American fan called John McCabe, who was at that final Birmingham show and went backstage to meet his heroes. They clicked and formed a lasting friendship. McCabe would later create a global appreciation society for the pair called the Sons of the Desert after one of their movies. And the Birmingham branch is one of the world's biggest. John Allah is its founder. Most of our members wear a fez. Uh, people think we wear a bowl of hats, but we actually wear a fez because in the film, The Sons of the Desert, Long and Hardy wore a fez. So Sons of the Desert, this is the film. Yeah. And the, as it were, we've got tents in the desert. And what's yeah. our tent called? Our tent's called Laughing Gravy. With Laurel and Hardy, the Brummy connection runs surprisingly deep. Stan enjoyed a drink. And someone he enjoyed having a drink with more than most was Charlie Hall, Birmingham born and bred, who appeared in 47 of the Laurel and Hardy films. Charlie Hall was a working class Brummy like, like myself, born in Birmingham in 1899. And as a carpenter, he decided to try his luck in Hollywood. He became a friend of a young guy called Stan Laurel. They remained friends all their life, so he got him a part in 47 of the Laurel and Hardy films. So there is a <laughs> Birmingham chippy yeah. in about half of the Lauren and Hardy films. That's correct, yeah. People talk about Lauren and Hardy, and the first thing they say to me is custard pie. In the film, The Battle of the Century, they threw 3,000 pies. And I'm proud to say that the first pie thrown in that film was thrown by a young man from the Warden district of Birmingham, Charlie Hall. The first pie thrown in a Laurel and Hardy film was thrown by somebody born and bred in Birmingham. That is correct. The 53-54 tour of Britain was to be their last as a double act. They performed their final full week in Birmingham before Oliver got ill and could only appear for one last show in Plymouth. They'd make a final TV appearance filmed in the States for the BBC, seen here. A poignant farewell to their British fans. Goodbye, Brother Water Rats, and our many friends and fans. Good luck and God bless you all. We'll never forget you. That's right, Stanley. We never shall. Today, the members of the Laurel and Hardy fan club remember them not worn down by performing, but as comedy legends. And they're particularly proud and happy because they know it was a Birmingham boy who made movie history like this. Ah, oh, very good, Giles. And Giles is here to tell us a little bit more. But first, uh, Ricky, it's interesting that Laurel and Hardy's comedy lives on in yours. Oh, I, I'm obsessed with them. I remember the first time I ever saw... I was about five or six, I, I watched Laurel and Hardy, and Ollie looked down the lens at me 
and I, I was sold. And uh, in the office, it that was such a joy. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's terrible for an actor because I want to do it on everything now. I just want to always go. Just look straight down the lens because it's so it's so compelling to watch. Is so, that yeah. where the sides in the office come from? Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, but we were allowed to do it because it was a documentary. But all the time, um, me and Martin Freeman used to have competitions at who could do the best Ollie. <laughs> 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 and, and, <laughs> like that. We were doing it all the time between takes, just doing and doing quotes for each other as well. He's obsessed as well. Uh, no, I I'm absolutely I love Lauren Hardy. Yeah, and we saw some of the Battle of the Century, big pie fight in that film there. But it wasn't typical of Lauren no, Hardy's acting. All the pies in that was a bit of a spoof, really. They thought that, you know, pies were over-egging it, rather, in the movies. And so they steered clear of pies, except in that one particular feature, where they went pie berserk, you know. Yeah. The, the pie itself is really old and interesting, the origin of the pie, because it comes from the European circus tradition. And it got to Hollywood in uh, 1909, originally, character called Ben Turpin, who flirts rather outrageously, and the young lady gives him a custard pie. Is he the one with the eye? Is he, is he that one? That's ben the Turpin? man. Yeah. That's the man. But it really took off in 1913, a, a lady called Mabel Normand. So it's a century old. She was there in the studio, and she saw a genuine lemon meringue pie oh. on the table, saw Fatty Arbuckle, the cameras were rolling, legend has it she picked it up and gave it really? to Fatty Arbuckle. So this is the centenary, then? This uh, is the uh, centenary uh, of the each other pie. To celebrate. Why did you use me when you were talking about Fatty Arbuckle? <laughs> <laughs> because he's an iconic figure. That's it right, just yeah. came naturally. Yeah, thank but you. But one of the most... And, of course, he was also ambidextrous, Fatty Arbuckle. He could throw two pies simultaneously oh, well, in so different cool. directions yeah. and hit the target, which really couldn't be done by many. Yeah. Do you, do you know, one of the loveliest things in that film, yeah, one of the most loveliest things in that film is when you said that, you know, that guy was one of the, 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 the least to see um, Laurel and Hardy in colour, because mm -hmm. obviously mo so many people are used to seeing them in black and white. And we've got this pie here, which is a perfect example of how pies were created for black and white telly. Well, what's intriguing is here you have a pie, and of course, when it was black and white, a pale pie couldn't be seen. So they added blackberries or blueberries or any dark coloured fruit or even chocolate to make the pie stand out yeah. in right. black and white. And if you were a blonde or wearing light coloured clothes, you got one of these darker custard pies. But if you were dark haired, they gave you the lemon meringue pie with lots <laughs> of cream on top. But they never threw a pie with a plate because that would have been... <laughs> Well, exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks. No, they, no, they always use Good a, nice, advice. a nice soft yeah. crust. <laughs> <laughs> and we get all this from Buster Keaton, who right. of course was the great authority. And in the 1960s, he was still alive, and he revealed the secrets from 1917. He kept these secrets all these years, and at last it came out. How it was done, how it was made, what the rules were. Max Sennett insisted you could throw a pie at a mother-in-law, but never at a mother. That's you, fair enough. You, yeah. Well, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. Now, we've got some...